All right. So we'll get started. This is basics two, and we are going to talk about how to add instructional content into the content area of your course. So I'm going to demo for you a lot of different types of instructional materials that you can add, um, just uh, like PowerPoint, Word, Google Docs, video, you name it. I'm going to try to give you an example of all the different types and what it looks like in D2L from your perspective and from, these, and from the student's perspective. So that's going to be our big goal today. And then I'm also going to show you how to set up a basic Zoom room if you wanted to hold synchronous sessions. It's going to be a very basic overview of creating a room. So if you want to learn more about all the settings and the features within Zoom, I recommend attending a Zoom session that's offered this week. Okay, so I'm first gonna go into my spring term course. Okay, so here we are on our homepage. To access the content tool in D2L Brightspace, you'll want to click on content from the navigation bar. So we'll go up to the navigation bar at the top and click on content. And what I'm going to do is just methodically go through this page and explain what all the elements are. Um, so as you can see, even though we clicked on content, your navigation bar has remained the same. Remember, these are all the tools that you have access to in your course. You can have quick links to them. Um, if you wanted to see all the options that are available to you, you can click on course admin, but don't worry about that right now. You have what you need right here in the toolbar. Um, over here on the right hand, or excuse me, my other right, my left hand side of the screen is the table of contents area. And this lists out all your modules. And you can think of modules kind of like file folders on your computer where you can organize your content um, for your topic or your week or so on. What we recommend doing is to definitely organize that content by the topic or the week rather than organizing the top, uh, your content by um, content item type. So like power of, uh, a module for PowerPoints and a module for assignments and a module for articles and a module for links. What you really wanna do when you're organizing your course in an online environment is to make sure everything that the student needs for a particular topic or for a particular week is all located in one place. So that's what modules do for you. You can create a module and you can put all your course materials for that particular topic or week in one place for your students. That way they're not having to go in between a whole bunch of different modules to figure out where this link is, where that link is, and so on. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But that's what we have on the left-hand side is your table of contents that lists out the modules. And we started you with, um, a variety of modules, a getting started module, a course information module, a week one, two, and three module. Um, and that was, this was made when under the expectation that uh, campus was going to resume in three weeks. So that's why you only see three modules. I'll show you how to create multi, a, a new module when we get to week four and five. So at the top above this table of contents, you'll see three links. There's an overview section, a bookmarks, and a course schedule. I'm gonna talk about each one fairly briefly. The overview section, um, oops, I was gonna, really quick, um, I'm gonna remove that. I forgot to remove that. So really quick, so when you go into the overview section, you're going to see um, kind of a blank area where you can add a message or, and or add a file of some sort. So here in the overview section, let's say I wanted to add some sort of welcome message to my students. You can click on, um, click on the text that says add a welcome message overview or description. If you notice it, it provides a gray bar across, allows you to know you can edit that. Click on that and it'll open up into an editor where you can actually write text and content. What we'll do is we'll paste um, some text that I have written for the welcome module in here. And, um, you might want to bold my title a little bit and maybe I'll center it. One thing I'd recommend doing when you're playing around with this toolbar and any of the editing features within D12 Brightspace is to get really familiar with all the options that are available for you for formatting. It's a very simple um, toolbar. It has simple word processing features. So if you're um, familiar with a, a, like a Google Docs or Word in a very simple manner, um, this is very 
very familiar in that sense. So I'm gonna click update and we'll see what my message looks like. Now, what happens is when you actually create an overview section in your content area, when you put a message there in overview, when a student clicks on content for the very first time, it'll take them directly to the overview section, which is a really handy feature. And so then you can actually direct students and say something about the course, the content, and how you have things organized. It could be something in addition to that welcome message you put on the homepage. Another thing you can do is also add a file. So if I could come and drag and drop a file here, so maybe I'm thinking, well, you can never have too many places to put your syllabus, right? So what you can do is add your syllabus to that overview section as well. And I'm going to drag and drop a file from my computer into that little box that says drag a file here to update an attachment. So let me, here we go. I'm gonna grab a syllabus. I'm gonna put it in here. It's a PDF, but you can upload a Word document too. PowerPoint file, um, if you have a syllabus in a PowerPoint file, I think PDF or Word document is gonna be the most common um, syllabus fi file format. But then you, the student will be able to view your, your syllabus right here as well on the overview page. Now, you may be wondering, well, what if I don't, um, what if I don't have an overview blurb? Well, don't worry about that. If it's empty and you leave it empty, students will immediately be taken to the content area at the top of the table of contents. So what they'll see is um, this view. So when they first log in to uh, log into B12 Brightspace, they go into your course, they click on content, and you don't have anything in your overview section, then they'll be taken to the table of contents and they'll be able to get a bird's eye view of all the modules and the content that you've uploaded into your course. So if you don't put anything in overview, that's fine. D2L well notices that and it'll direct them directly to the table of contents. So it's just another option for you to use. Now the other option here is bookmarks. Now bookmarks is set up so that um, the individual user can uh, bookmark certain pages like the syllabus, for instance, and then they can go into the bookmarks page and have like a set of quick links to various important um, course content that they've identified. Now you as the instructor can't put bookmark material for your students. It's literally um, in individually driven. So you as the instructor can create bookmarks to content in your own course. The student can create their own bookmarks to content in your course. So it's based on the actual user and not what the instructor sets as these bookmarks. The course schedule um, is linked to the calendar tool in D12 Brightspace. So if you create an assignment or a quiz and you add a due date or an end date, um, that will get linked and put into the course schedule in the course calendar. So the course schedule is kind of an agenda view of the course calendar. All right, so let's go um, into a module. Let's go into the getting started module and I'll show you what's been put in here for you. Um, if you had a course shell that didn't have any content in it, you would have been pushed this basic template shell into your, into your spring term course. Um, if not, if you did have stuff in your course, then it's likely you may not have this module in there. But I'm just gonna show you um, what elements are in this getting started module. And it's purely for students, it's student driven, and it has four pages, one on how do you get started with Brightspace. And I'm just gonna show you what each page looks like. It has uh, Brightspace video tutorials for the student um, so they can get started using various tools in D2L if they're not very familiar with them. There's the technology requirements, the supported web browsers, communicating online, and of course, another link to that student help desk. We always like to have that. Um, for students and for instructors to move through content in D12 Brightspace, to go to the next page in a module, you can go back out, but what's easier is just to click the next button. There's a little next button up here, and if you click on that, it'll take you to the next item in the list in your module. Now, the second page we have is what apps can PCC students use? 
And um, so we have Google Apps, Google Drive, um, Zoom, Brightspace Pulse app, if they wanted to download that. Um, so we have information for them on some of the major applicate apps for their phone, mobile devices that students can use at, um, that PCC supports. I'll click on the next button, go to the third page. Here we have a page that links all the resources for students to find help. So advising, bookstore, career services, counseling, disability services, um, financial aid, and so on. This is a great resource for students who want to just find what is available to me at PCC. And then the last page, the fourth page, is um, what policies do PCC students need to know? And I realize we put policies on our syllabi, so we do have a lot of them here. So we've also linked to some that aren't necessarily required on the course syllabus. Um, so it gives kind of a one-stop shop for all the policies for students. Um, you, policies, you know, it's always good to have those in multiple places too for students to see, not just the syllabus. So that's your getting started module for students. It just kind of gives this overview of information about PCC and resources that they have available to them. I am going to go back out. I want to get back to the content area in D12 Brightspace. There are two ways to do this. I can either click on content from the nav bar again. I can click, actually I should say there's three ways. I can click on getting started from this breadcrumb menu. So if you see these links here at the top, right above this title, um, this is called breadcrumbs, and you can you can click on the one to go back up the module. And I believe you can also click the next button, and it will take you right back to your module. Um, and you've looked through everything in there so far. So those are three ways you can get back to the content area fairly quickly and easily. All right, um, another thing I'd like to talk about, I'm gonna go into the course information page, or excuse me, the course information module. So we created this course information module and the reason why is because it's very likely um, the majority of your students have at least been exposed to D12 Brightspace in at least one other course. And because of that, um, they may be familiar with having a course information module because many instructors who use D12 Brightspace do have a module that called something similar to course information, if not actually called course information. And this module is where you would want to house all those materials that are course specific generally um, for the course. Um, they're more general in nature. They're not topic related. Uh, they are just kind of for expectations for the course, like your syllabus. Maybe you have an instructor bio you want to include. You can upload that to the course information. Maybe a rubric on how you grade some particular assignments. Those could be uploaded to the course information module. So the course information module is really for those global um, materials that um, pertain to how the course is run and grading schemes and so on. So I'm gonna click on course information and currently it's empty. We created the module for you so you could get started quickly. Um, and I'm just gonna walk through some of the elements of a module. So if you noticed, we have the modules listed on the left-hand side in the table of contents. When you click on a module, all the module items or content will show up on the right-hand side. Um, so this makes it really handy to kind of click through different modules and actually view things at the same time. One thing if you notice up here, you have the course information title. You can edit this if you'd like. Um, I would try to keep it as similar to this as possible just because students are familiar with the course information module more often than not. But let's say you really wanted to emphasize it and you wanted to just add importance to it. All you needed to do, if you notice what I did, is click on the title. So let me do that again. Um, you come up, you hover over the title of the module, course information, you click on it, and it allows you to start editing away. Um, if you notice, there's a little down arrow here. And as we start adding content to the content area, um, all content items will have a little down arrow next to it. And this is an action menu. That's what it's called in B2 Brightspace, it's an action menu. It is very similar to the right click in Word where you right click in Word or PowerPoint and you get all these little options that you can do for something. Uh, it's the same principle here. If I click on this down arrow, I'm gonna get a lot of options on what I can do with this uh, module. So I can edit the title, I could hide this module from users, 
I can move it up or down in the table of contents, or I could delete it if I needed to. So this down arrow is going to be your friend as an instructor. And this is something that is unique to um, the, all these options are what instructors see. Students won't have this list of options. They might have, the, they'll have a down arrow, but their options are gonna be much more limited and they'll have options like to download content or view, view the content item, something like that. You'll have all the editing privileges as an instructor to an item. Another thing you'll notice is there's two um, sections here, one for add dates and, and restrictions. I would recommend not using this right now. This is a more advanced feature and I, you know, you don't need to be worrying about that one right yet. But one thing you might want to do is add a module description. You could click in here and leave a note for your students telling them what your expectations are for the first week and maybe any notes about any of the content items that you're putting into um, this module. So um, you could say something like, um, welcome to the class, please pay close attention to X, Y, and Z. Um, I am looking forward So I'm just throwing stuff off the hip here, but you can just write a little blurb about what the expectations for that module are, um, what you want the students to get out of that module and pay close attention to. You can click the update button and the little message will pop up right before you start adding content items. Uh, so that's one way of, you can think of it about, you can think of it as, this is the area where you, when you co where you're in the classroom and you're starting to introduce a new topic and you're coming in, you're talking to your students about, you know, introducing that particular topic, that blurb you say at the very beginning, that's something you could reiterate in a course description, for instance. That's how you would translate what you do in the classroom to, um, to an online environment, is to have those little anecdotal prompts that you provide in class, you can add to these description areas. Okay, so let's start adding a syllabus to our course information module. Now, I did add it to the course overview, and if you were in my basics one session, I also recommended um, that you add it to the activity feed or to your announcements. The two places I absolutely recommend that you put your syllabus is adding it to your activity feed or to your announcements, and then also to the course information module. And the reason for that is because um, if you add it to your announcements or activity feed on your homepage, once you start adding messages there or removing them or students removing them, then they won't have easy access to the syllabus again. And you always want them to have access to your syllabus. So having that in the course information module means it stays in the course inform module, information module and the student can always go back there and see it and find it very easy. So that is another reason why it's really important to also have your syllabus in a course information module and not just posted on the home page um, in an announcement or an activity feed. So let's add a syllabus. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, I'm gonna do, if you notice, there's an, a, a prompt here that says drag and drop files. So if you have a window open with all your files in it, like I have here, let's minimize that. Um, like I have over here, I could literally drag and drop my file into this area and it would upload to B12. Another way of doing it is um, to search your computer for the file. So you can click on this upload create button and this button is gonna be your friend. Um, it lets you do everything pretty much that you want to be able to do in B12 Brightspace to get your course up and running in the next few weeks. So um, that blue button, keep it in mind, upload create, Click on that and you can upload files from your computer. So I'm gonna search for my file on my computer and I'll click on my computer and then I can click on upload or I can also have the option to drag and drop from here too. What's neat about this drag and drop feature is I can drag and drop multiple items at the same time. So I could select multiple files and drag them into this box and it will upload three, four, five items at a time. So let me drag over my um, course syllabus. So as you can see, I can drag it over and when it turns blue, uh, 
or and you get the dotted lines, it lets you know that uh, your file is ready to be, you can um, release your mouse and your file will be uploaded here. Another option is to click on the upload button and you can actually search your computer for the file and your file um, browser will pop up and you can look at the file explorer will pop up and you'll be able to look for the file there as well. I'll just do that and I don't need to add both. So I'll remove one for this purpose. And then you just click add. Um, oh, and because I use this in a demo and I thought I'd removed it already and it looks like I didn't accidentally, it's asking me, do I want to overwrite the file? Um, you won't get this because you haven't uploaded the file yet to your course. So I'm just gonna say overwrite existing file because I don't need a lot of files cluttering my area. And it uploaded my syllabus. So now I have my syllabus in my course information module. But what I'm noticing is it's a file name. I don't have spaces or anything here and I want to make it a little bit more readable for my students. So I'm gonna click on that down arrow because remember that's your action item and it lets you do all the editing features for that content item. So let's click on the down arrow and I'm gonna select edit properties in place. Edit properties in place lets you edit the title and add a description if you'd like. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fix my title. And since this is you know, a, the actual term shell, they don't need to know the term again because they know what term they're in. So I'm just gonna call it the course syllabus and schedule. And then um, I might just add a little prompt. So think about this prompt as being the prompt you would give as you're passing out the syllabus to your students in class. Um, if there's anything particular on the syllabus um, that you want them to know. And It's 11 weeks for spring. And then you can click update. And now the students have, I'm gonna refresh the page so you can, actually what I'll do is I'm going to, um, I'll just refresh the page right now. I won't get ahead of myself. Um, and so the students will have a link to the schedule and you'll have a little prompt underneath it, letting them know why that content item is important, what they should, why they should read it. And if you have any expectations regarding the syllabus, like you want them to take some kind of quiz or do a little task with the syllabus, um, you can put a prompt in there as well. So now we have the course syllabus and schedule here and you can add other content the same way. You can click a blue upload create content item and continue on adding content to the course information module, that general course information. But now let's talk about adding course materials um, and all the variety of course materials you can add. We've added a syllabus, we've added a PDF document. So what else can we add into D12? Let's actually, let me just show you what it looks like to see a PDF document. PDF documents, Word documents, PowerPoint documents, um, images, all view really nicely in D12 Writespace. So if you see this, um, it just pulls the document in and the students can view it right here. They don't have to worry about downloading anything. Um, and so it makes it really easy for students and you to see what's in your course. And they can just scroll through it and they can choose to download and print or, or whatever it might be that they would want to do with it. Okay, so let's go in and let's start adding some course content. I teach economics, so I'm gonna be adding some economic information on supply and demand for you today. So. Um, I'm gonna create a quick welcome message. This week we will be studying supply and demand. It's fundamental to the study of economics. All right, and let's start adding some content. So first thing I need is some sort of reading. I don't, um, it's the first week of class and my students are getting their textbook or perhaps I just have a set of readings so I don't use a textbook. Um, so I'm going to um, use my publisher has a sample chapter for the, for the first chapter and I'm gonna use that for students who haven't gotten their textbook yet. So let's pull that in. 
So I'm going to click upload a file. I'm gonna to go to my computer, click upload, or you can drag and drop. And I'm gonna select the um, chapter reading that I want them to do on select supply and demand. Oh, I think it's gonna tell me it's duplicated again. Add. So there it is, great. Um, so if you notice, I'm gonna fix this title so it's a little bit more clear to students. I'm gonna click on that down arrow. I'm going to select edit properties in place and just um, rename this a bit so it's really clear to students. Um, what that item is. Um, and then I could add a description saying this is the first chapter from your textbook. So for those of you who haven't received your textbooks yet, I could add that description in here if I wanted to. Now I wanna add in the next item. And let's say um, I had them do their reading and now I want them to watch some sort of video um, on economics because you know, I don't want them just to rely completely on um, just reading the textbook. So I'm going to pull in a video. Um, I have it up here. So let's see here. So I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to select a video, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a video. Um, to D12. Hosting is under party if your friends can be tough. So. And another thing that's neat is all these ads, they get stripped out when you pull into the D12 Brightspace. So your students don't have to watch ads, which is nice. And you don't have to watch them either. Okay, so I'm going to click on that upload create button. I'm going to select video or audio. And all you have to do for YouTube is paste in that web address. And if you noticed, it pulls in the video, a preview of the video, and also provides the title for you. You don't even have to type it unless you wanted to tweak it a little bit. And then you just click save. And it pulls the video right in. And if I click play, it's gonna go straight to the video. Hi, Dr. Clifford. This is Adrian. And there aren't any ads, which is really nice. I'm gonna go back to week one module. And let's start, keep adding some content. So, okay, I had them do the reading. There's a fun little video for them to watch. Now I want them to look at my slides where I have some examples on how to do problems. Well, let's upload a PowerPoint. I'm gonna click on the upload create button. I'm going to do upload files. I'm gonna add in my PowerPoint and we can see what that looks like. All right, so I've added my PowerPoint. So what, um, there is an option in YouTube where you can set a start time. You can try using that link or the embed code for that um, in, in, into the video. But uh, so yes, you can do that or you can leave a, you can click the down arrow say edit properties in place and add a description saying start the video at this timestamp and watch until this timestamp. So there's a couple of options that you can do with that. And that was a question from Margin in the uh, chat window. Okay, let's see here. So let's take a look at this PowerPoint and see how it views. So students don't have to have PowerPoint on their computer to view your files, your, your, your slide decks. They can view them right inside D12 Brightspace. And it might take a little bit because I have a lot of examples and some photos and graphs and stuff on here. Um, so we'll see, hopefully it won't take too long to um, preview the document. And if it does a little bit longer, I might just There it goes, here it is. 
And so the students can go through my slide deck and get some examples. And here's, and so that's what a PowerPoint slide will look like when you import it into the Fulbright space. Okay, so let's go on to another file type. Or if you're a Google Doc user, you can add Google Docs right in here too. So now they've done my reading, they've watched a video, they've looked at my slides with some examples on it, I'm gonna have them do a worksheet. So let's add a Google Doc worksheet. We're gonna click Create, and we're gonna create a link. Because remember, Google Docs are links, they're on the web. So I'm gonna say Create a Link, and I'm gonna go and get my Google Doc. I'm gonna pull my Google Docs over here. Here's my worksheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the share button so I can get my sharing features with my students. Um, I, if you notice, I have anyone with the link can view. The default for PCC is anyone at PCC can view the document. And um, this can be problematic, especially if your student is logged into their browser with their personal Gmail account. And what can happen is um, the students who want to view it, they have to be logged into their PCC and if they can't view it, then they're going to be sending you a, a message saying, can I get access to this document? And it's going to be from their personal Gmail accounts. So a way to just avoid that altogether is to make sure you set it for anyone with the link. And to do that, um, you can just click the little down arrow next to whatever it might say. Um, anyone at Portland Community College with the link can edit. You would select more, and then you would choose the option on anyone with the link. And then click save. And now the link will work for anyone with the link can view it. And that's fine because you're only sharing the link in your D12 Brightspace classroom, so only your students are getting the link anyway. So I'm gonna copy that link and I'm gonna go back over to D12 Brightspace. Okay, so here's my worksheet. I'm gonna title it Worksheet Demand and Supply. And here's my URL. And then I'm gonna click Create. This is pretty nifty, and I think you'll like this if you're a Google Doc user. So when D12 pulls your Google Doc in, um, it actually lets you edit your Google Doc right here in D12 Brightspace. So I have to admit, my printable, CD, uh, my printable C syllabus, I, I insert as a Google Doc because if I find a typo or something, I can just go in and quickly fix it. I don't have to go around and dig around in my Google Drive to find it and fix it there. I can just fix it in D2L Brightspace. And since it's a link, it's a link to the original document. So any changes I make in D2L Brightspace is made to the original document in your Google Drive as well. So it's all linked and it's all sourced from one document. And it's really great. And your students wouldn't have all the editing features, obviously, because you've only given them the um, ability to view, not to edit. But if you're logged in, um, okay, Barbara, I'll go through that. The whole thing, or is there a specific part? Okay, so um, from the beginning of adding, going and getting the Google Docs, so let me, adding the worksheet. Okay, great. So let me just show you that really quick. So here's my Google Doc. And what you'll want to do is click the blue share button. You'll want to make sure anyone with the link can view. The default is anyone at Portland Community College. So you'll need to change that. And to change it, you just click the down arrow next to that and you would select more from the menu. Once you select more from the menu, you'll have the option to um, select the radio button next to anyone with the link. You select that and just click save. Now, once you've done that, it will say anyone with the link can view, and you can take the link, you can copy it, copy that link, link copy to clipboard, and what you'll do is you'll go into D2L Brightspace, you'll go into the module you want to add that link to. You'll say, you'll click that blue upload create button. You'll select create a link. And then you'll, you'll place in the web address in the URL field, and then you'll create a title for that. We're gonna call it Worksheet Demand, Demand and Supply.
and it will pull your Google Doc right into D12 Brightspace. So hopefully that was a good recap for you, Barbara. You can add Google Slides in the same manner. If I wanted to add a Google Slides, I'll let you see what a Google Slide looks like really quick. So I'm gonna create a link. And here's my And just want you to see how well these view right inside B2 Albright space. And if you had a slide deck using Google Slides, you could edit your slides right inside D2 Albright space too. So as you can see, I have full editing ability to my, my, power, my Google Slide deck. Um, another thing is you can upload Excel spreadsheets into D2 Albright space. And um, I would say Google, if you added a Google Sheet, it's gonna look a lot better than if you added an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm just gonna show you a quick example um, of what that would look like. And this time I'm going to do the drag and drop function. So you can see that. So here's an Excel spreadsheet I have in my files. I'm gonna drag it over. So if you noticed, um, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna demonstrate that again. I, I'm taking a file from my file explorer and I'm gonna drag that file over. And when I do, you get a blue bar that pops up and you can kind of choose where location in your content area you want that to go. And then once you do, you let up on the mouse and it'll put your the Excel spreadsheet right there. So I have my Excel spreadsheet, relationship between marginal cost and average variable cost. I'm gonna do the same thing with a Google Sheet so you can see the difference. It's the same exact file, I'm just saved in two formats. Okay. Um, so once I created this link to a Google slide, you can see that the spreadsheet shows up. You can see the columns. Um, you can edit and do all of that just like you can with all the other Google slides. Let's take a look at what the Excel spreadsheet looks like. And um, just to get you prepared, think about when you try to print an Excel spreadsheet on a printer and how the pages get printed out. And remember it sections out a spreadsheet you have one panel, one page, page two is the right side, and then three, four, five, six, depending on how wide your spreadsheet is. So it's the same type of principle. It's going to break your spreadsheet up just like that um, and make it, it'll view like a PDF file in a way. So let me show you that. And this is a very simple spreadsheet. So it's gonna, it would work, but if you had one that was any wider, but if you notice, um, my marginal cost column is missing, and it's probably on page two down here <laughs> instead of being in a regular spreadsheet. So this is a really great example to show you that Excel spreadsheets don't view very nicely within the 12 Brightspace. So if you are using Excel spreadsheets, recommend to your students that they download the file to view it properly. Is there any questions on any specific type of um, content item I have not covered yet? So that create a link option, um, just to go over that, I did it to Google Docs, but that create a link, you can link to anything. You can link to articles, websites, um, anything that's out on the World Wide Web, you can link to. Um, and uh, if you do create a link, let me um, create a link. And let me just get something off of. Um, let me get the CCOG really quick so you can see that. It's the website.
Okay, so I took a website and this website pulled right into B12 Brightspace. But sometimes that doesn't always happen. And you, and if it's um, not a secure enough site, and D2 won't allow it to be brought into a secure platform. Um, so you might just get a white screen, or you might get a little dial that just kind of spins like it's trying to load the page. If it takes too long, I would recommend this. What you would do is if you get a white page or you get the little spinning circle, then you would click the down arrow next to the title of the link. You would select edit link and you would just mark the box open as external resource. Once you do that, when the students click on it, it'll open up in a new tab and they'll be able to access it just fine. So um, D2L can kind of figure that out for itself most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. And you just need to go in, edit the link and uh, select open as an external resource. And that will take care of the problem. All right. Let's see here. Um, let's talk about what happens when you get to week four or week five, and you need to add another module here. So to add a module, um, underneath your the last module in your list, there's a box that says add a module. If you click on it, it'll open up a field and you can write in a new module. So I'm gonna write week four, hit enter or click outside of the box and a new module pops up for you. And so once you have that new module, it'll, you can come over and you can add a description and you can start adding content to it with the upload create button. So let's see, is there any other content items any of you would like to be able to add to D12 Brightspace that I haven't covered in this session? I tried to be as comprehensive as I could. So um, I will say you can upload any file you want into D12 Brightspace and there's really no file limit size. I think it's like one gigabyte. So that's pretty big. Uh, it would be really hard for you to max out that capacity on a single file. Um, if it doesn't, if it's a file type that's not supported in D12 Brightspace um, in the sense that it will view inside D12 Brightspace, all it does is it prompts the student for a download. Um, so like computer science instructors will be having, will upload um, code packages that, for the applications that they use specifically. Obviously, D12 can't view those inside the platform. The students can just download them and view them on their computers in the application that they need to, to do that in. So there is no limit to the type of file you can add to D12 Brightspace. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Yes, I'm gonna talk about Zoom meetings here right next. So let's go into that um, with that prompt, thank you. Okay, um, if there aren't any other questions about adding content into D12 Brightspace, I'm gonna go into online rooms so, and talk about setting up a very basic Zoom room for your students. Um, so what you'll want to do is click on online rooms from the navigation bar at the top. And um, what you'll do is if you've never clicked on that link before, you're going to get a message prompt that asks you to authorize your account. You want to authorize and then okay it. Once you do that, you're going to see something very similar to this, except you won't have a list of meetings here as I have. What you will want to do is um, you'll have a couple options. You have a list of all your upcoming meetings here. So once you start scheduling them, they will show up. It'll show all your previous meetings. So the meetings that are in the past, you have a personal meeting room. This is a great meeting room for if you're having one-on-ones with students like um, that they wanted to meet with you just personally one-on-one -on -one, or um, to talk about whatever it might be or even possibly office hours if it's gonna be a small group. However, you, if you know you're gonna schedule specific office hours at certain times, you might wanna just schedule a specific room for office hours and not use your personal meeting room for that. And then if you decide to record any of your sessions, you can click, you go to the cloud recording tab and it'll show all the recordings that you've done in your account. And 
I'm just going to talk about the very basics of setting up a room. So if you want to know more, like I said at the beginning of the session about Zoom and its features, I highly recommend you going to a Zoom session and they'll talk all about it. All right, so let's schedule a meeting really quick. And to do that, you just click on the blue schedule a new meeting button. And uh, what you do is you select a topic for it. So perhaps I'm going to have my office hours. And you can provide a description um, here uh, if you'd like for your meeting room. And then you would schedule when you want it to occur. So if it's well, let's just do class day one for the first day of class, for instance. And my first day of class is going to be tomorrow at um, 4 p.m. And that's what it was, that was when it was scheduled in the, in the course uh, schedule. And so I need to make sure that I keep the same date and time for my students. So then you can select the duration of that meeting. Um, so you can select one hour, you can select two hours, three hours, four hours, four and a half hours, whatever it might be. So I'm just going to set it for two hours. Um, I would recommend doing it for longer than you really might need it for. So you can always end the meeting early. Um, the time zone should be set as default to Pacific Standard. And then you can select whether you not you want it to be a reoccurring meeting. So I'm just going to show you the options. Um, but I'm just going to keep it as one because I, I showed the options the last time. Now I have a lot of um, recurring meetings to clean up. But you can come in and choose your reoccurrence daily, weekly, monthly, and then no fixed time. And then you can repeat it however many days. So there's a lot of options that you can um, set up here for your recurrence of your meetings. Um, and then you can choose video. You can have choose whether or not the video is on when the participant enters the room. Um, I usually keep this off. I would recommend keeping it off um, for participants when they enter. But you yourself as a host, you can have it set to be on when you first enter, or you can have it be off as well. And then you would just turn on your camera when you're ready. For audio, I recommend you have both options selected. There's telephone, computer audio, or both. So if your student doesn't have a microphone or speakers on their computer, maybe they're using an old desktop or something, they can use their, their cell phones and call in and use that as your, their microphone and speaker. So it's really handy to have um, both the telephone and computer options available. Um, then the default setting in the meeting options is to enable join by host. This allows your participants to enter the room even if you're not there yet. So if you're running a little bit late or you're having some technical difficulties, your students can still get into the room. Um, or you could choose that they wait in a waiting room too until you're there and you let them in. But that is something you can talk about and learn more about in a Zoom session. But the default is just enable join before host. Okay, and then you can just click save. And now I want to go back and I want to look at what this, I want to see what this looks like in my online room. So I go to my online rooms. And I have my EC298 day one class set here and I can click the start button to start that meeting. Students would go into online rooms and they would go to this line and they would select that meeting and they would, could go right into your meeting room. And then your recordings would also be saved right here in the Zoom area, in the online room area as well. So you'd have everything kind of housed for your Zoom and your Zoom recordings all in online rooms in D12 Brightspace. So hopefully that answers your question, Marjan. Did I pronounce your name correctly? We're close. Thank you, <laughs> I tried. Okay, um, let's see, is there any other questions? We have a few more minutes that I am happy to answer any questions that you have about adding content to the course, um, types of content, or even a Zoom-related question.
it's been a really long day. I think so, so yes. So much information, but you did a very nice job of keeping track of what was going on in text at the same time. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if none of you have any more questions, um, this is a recorded session. So if you want to view it later, you are able to do so. And it will be posted on our recorded workshop website. Um, let me pull that up for you. I can put the link in. You can go to the training schedule and there's a link to the recorded workshops there. Oh, a quick overview of basic one. So basic one, um, in that session, I talk about how to log into D12 Brightspace, and I, I give an overview of the My Homepage and explain all the elements on the My Homepage. And then I go into a, into a course and I explain all the elements that are on a course homepage um, that, the student, that you might want to, um, so that you know kind of where things are. I talk about uh, the different links in the navigation bar. I talk about how you can change an image in your banner. Uh, let's see here. I talk about how to email your students from the class list. And I talk about how to post announcements on the homepage using the activity feed or the announcements tool. So those are the major elements of basic design. All right, well, if there aren't any other questions um, or if you think of one later, you can, about this session and questions related to it, you, are, you can feel free to reach out to me. You can send me an email at rondi.shy at pcc.edu. I'm happy to answer them. Also, um, you signed in and registered when you hopefully signed up for the, the session. So we have that. And then we also have your name um, on the Zoom session. So we should be able to, um, Thank you. Um, also, keep in mind that your divisions likely have an expert colleague that's used D2L and they are willing to help instructors move their content online for remote teaching. So if you have questions about pedagogy and what to add and kind of ordering of your content, feel free to reach out to your division dean after you've taken these basic courses and see if you can be paired with an expert uh, colleague that's willing to help you. Um, I, we want you to know that there's resources and people out there who are wanting to make sure your transition is as successful as possible. Along those lines, I want to jump in and say Meredith Vargas in the library wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that the subject area librarians are um, eager to help everyone not have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to content for your courses, whatever you might need. Make sure you're reaching out to your subject area librarian in this process. Absolutely. Thank you, Monica. Okay, well, we're at time. I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a wonderful evening and you can relax a little bit and, and start in again tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll hopefully see you guys soon. Night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Rodney. You're welcome.